if a kid is wanting to improve his rhythm, he goes to a, a metronome. You know, if uh, if you're wanting to improve your drill, you now then you can go to your cell phone for the ultimate drill book. Um, you know, if you want to improve your sound, you you kind of have to go to a tuner, and that's not really even the best way to do that. Um, so the the drones, anybody that's going to invest the time and the energy in in working with their drones, that's that's the metronome of rhythm. That's the you know, it, that really is the standard because it's not, it's not negotiable. The, um, the drone doesn't let you play away based on how you feel. You, you can't like the law is here. It's like raising the bumpers at the bowling alley. You're, you're limited in your choices. <laughs> you just don't have, you don't have a choice to sound bad um, or to do something that is not in center. You physically cannot, you Whenever you turn those things on and you play with them, you cannot stand it. And your body will physically change to make it match. And uh, a tuner, I can play sharp or flat if I want to on a tuner. It doesn't force me to do anything. So the drones for kids playing with their best sound, not a better way to do it. That P90X for brass idea that we were talking about with Steve years ago, just you can be 500 pounds overweight and you put P90X CD1 in and you just do what's there. Just do what's there. And just the repetition, just of that constant correct information, just sort of breeds success. Hey everybody, welcome to the Marching Roundtable podcast. This is Tim Hinton, the beast <clears throat> of the marching arts. And we are talking about help for brass players. And that's always a great thing, helping our students improve and do better, especially I think uh, beginning or younger, uh, brass players and with me today uh, we have two two really smart people from Music City uh, drum and bugle corps are here Tom Lukowitz is here Tom how are you doing doing great thanks for having us absolutely and Steve Gulledge is here as well Steve how are you I'm doing great thank you yeah thank you so much for being here so so glad that you guys are doing or have been doing this work um, Tom thanks for reaching out to me and sort of explaining that you have these resources available I'm, I'm always happy to share that kind of stuff so before we get into talking about exactly what this is Tom why don't you just sort of introduce yourself again let everybody know what you do with the drum corps and you know in the rest of your life as well <laughs> sure uh, I'm the new brass captain at Music City uh, outside of the drum corps world uh, I'm the associate professor of low brass at the University of North Alabama and I play tuba with the Canton Symphony up in Canton Ohio and the Chamber Orchestra of New York Wow fantastic very good. And Steve, how about yourself? Uh, my name is Steve Gulledge. Uh, I'm the trumpet teacher at Keller High School in Keller, Texas. Uh, I oversee the fundamentals of Indian Springs Middle School, Keller Middle School, Keller High School, and the trumpet players 6th through 12th grade. Wow, fantastic. So I love how the drum corps community has such fantastic educators out there working with the students, teaching them all in the off season as well as during the drum corps season. Um, and this is a great example of that. It's Tom and Steve, both you guys really accomplished doing great, great work. How fortunate those students are to have you working with them. So Tom, tell me about these resources that you guys have created to help these students. Yeah, what we did is try to create a, a one-stop shop for brass exercises. Uh, with my students going into the break, you know, sometimes they'll forget their metronome or forget their music at home. And what uh, we did was just take the, our exercises, our fundamental packets, create custom drones with tempo so the pitches are already there for them and have the music displayed on the screen so they can pull up their iPhone, they can pull up their iPad, laptop, anywhere, and not have to say, oh, I forgot my folder or, oh, I forgot this. It's a one-stop shop for everything that they need. And I think Steve and I started messing around with this idea uh, way back in maybe 2015 when we were both teaching at Blue Nights. We were just joking around like, wouldn't it be great if there's like a P90X program for brass fundamentals? And that just sort of dinged something. And just over the past, I mean, at that, this point, 10 years, Steve's like, hey, can you make me of this thing? And sure, get that over to him. Hey, adjust this. Then it just keeps evolving. And it's been, uh, I think, a great resource, resource for both of our studios. That's cool. So, Steve, the idea is that the students can work independently at home using this technology <clears throat> to practice the fundamentals you're trying to teach them. Uh, 
yes. Uh, how it started for myself and my own students in my studio was I wanted to create, I, I needed a little bit of help creating something that the kids could have basically in their pocket, like a private teacher um, in their pocket, and they could do the exact same things with the exact same standards at home, on the go, on the road uh, that they do in school. And what I was trying to do, um, part of my job at Keller High School is to create a, a consistent skill set from sixth grade to 12th grade. Um, and it needs to be something that happens every year. It's the best way that I can serve the band program so that the band directors don't have to guess what strengths and weaknesses that their kids are going to have. And I needed a little bit of help creating that. And so, Tom, uh, I like you said, I can reach out to Tom and say, Tom, I need this type of an exercise. I need it to last this long. I need it to be in this key. And <clears throat> all of our high school and middle school kids today are extremely attached to their phones. So what Tom and I did is we just kind of tricked them into turning their phone into a brass <laughs> instrument. And, sure. and now then, any time that they want to practice or have their phone with them, um, it, it's it's their teacher and um, we can control the variables. We create, have created the exercises and the kids can turn something on. They can go to one of those links, they can turn it on. And for the next two minutes of their life, uh, we have already thought for them. All they have to do is just do it. So it's, it's a way to extend the instruction from the classroom when they're at home, you kind of know they're going to be practicing in a more efficient or in the right way. Is that the idea? Um, well, right. So my job at my level is to create physical habits. Um, I've never taught extensively at the university level, but from sixth to 12th grade, that's all that I'm interested in is I want to make sure that your physical habits are right. And <clears throat> um giving them these types of systems in place to where every day that they do this the sounds that they hear the sounds that they play with the speeds that they go are mathematically perfect that they can count on it they can depend on it and they can build real brass playing skills from it give me an example like i, I did go in and look at the videos and they're very cool and i see what you're describing but if somebody hasn't seen this before before they go look at it give me an example of like one of these exercises and how that would play out the way you just described it Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the first thing that pops to my mind is one of just a, a simple Caruso exercise where the goal is to get everything relaxed but perfectly into the center of the horn so we have that balance between the air and the lips. And if the correct pitch is going in here, the body's going to start adjusting. So they're learning that skill where a concert F is here. And then when they go up to, you know, two counts of rest, they go up to A flat. Well, the drone's right there with them, and it forces them to sort of learn where their opinion is of the pitch. Um, even at the college level, it's really hard to, and at the professional level with some places, it's hard to trust your neighbor. So if we can get everybody trusting the same source, all of a sudden their note centers are going center to center with no, okay, well, my two and three is normally sharp, but after doing this, that pitch is settled down, and it's, it's in the true center. So when you get to an ensemble, we have everybody really starting from, you know, straight up and down. And it, it's the first exercise that actually I found that teaches listening. You know, it's not, okay, listen to your neighbor, listen to your other neighbor, or listen to your triads. That's great. But if I'm sharp and Steve's flat and we're doing our job, we're going to do that and then figure out where that middle ground is. Whereas uh, everyone with my studio that we've been doing this with, they just sort of know where it is. We've taken out the option of buzzing 30 cents sharp or even 12 cents sharp. It's just really, it gives you everything and it puts the responsibility on making sure you're blowing correctly into the instrument. For me, uh, my students, um, one of the skills that we value a lot is what they sound like in the ensemble. Um, as a private teacher, I feel like that's my number one is how do we serve the band program itself? Uh, it doesn't really do us any good to have a bunch of really good players running around that don't know, understand how to sit next to each other uh, and that do not understand how to function as a member of an ensemble. So what I want them to be able to practice is the ensemble. 
well, you cannot take the Keller High School Band home with you every day after school, but we can take these uh, this drone system and that basically replaces the band. It replaces the brass section. And so every time the kid wants to sit down and, and participate in this way uh, with fundamentals, they have the option to do it with the, the brass section it just, just at home. Um, I teach my students to do it with their headphones. They do it with one ear on and one ear off um, so that they can have one ear on their own sound and then they have the true you know what I call true north. They have true north in the in the other ear, um, but it's the it's the consistency of the material uh, that I feel like is really the biggest uh, benefit. Is with the younger kids, six through twelve, having something that is that they can absolutely trust and believe in every day has made all of the difference in the world. Um, I'm very proud of the product that we put on the marching band fields every year. Uh, I'm proud of what we do in the individual level in the all-state process. And since Tom and I have started doing a lot more of the drones, I feel like that's where it is. That's where the difference is. So this is clearly it, so applicable to any musician. You know, it's it's such a smart concept. <clears throat> um, you brought this to Music City now. Um, how are what are you? I guess you're anticipating the same thing, like practicing with this. Um, standard of sound and matching pitch and everything is going to pay off for those musicians as well? A absolutely. I think having, like Steve said, the consistency of between camps, not just, um, I may be wrong, but I think our goal as educators is to create great brass players. And we're just happen to have 80 great brass players with a great training system set up at Music City this year. And um, I use these drones. I have students that are taking orchestral auditions and we create drones for that. Um, one of the lot tunes this year is gonna be the Greek Funeral March, big brass piece. I have a six and a half minute drone that the kids can take home and know exactly where all their chords are lining up with. Um, and I think it's just a great system to create great players, regardless of whether they're at Music City or the high school, the middle school, or auditioning for professional jobs. So uh, I, where I see the biggest benefit is if there's somebody in your audience that is maybe a clarinet player at a one director middle school or one director high school that does not have access to 12 professionally trained private teachers that show up on their campus every single day. And that clarinet player, that band director wants to teach a brass sectional for her school. This is it. This is where that is, is because what she can do is she can, um, the teacher can put put the track on, hit play, and if if the person wanted to, grab a mouthpiece, grab an instrument, and do it with her own kids. Um, it is, it doesn't have to be very advanced. It can be extremely simple, um, but it can cover, it, it can be a significant resource to those that are teaching that are not brass players, they can become brass players for their own programs through this. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think the drum court community does so, so well um, is create brass players out of musicians who play other things, right? And and I think that this is one of the things you're describing that I thought was so exciting about this. Um, I think a lot of drum cores that cater to younger students, you know, open class cores and um, maybe not top six drum cores, whatever, you know, like that's there. That's such an, a different sort of audience that they're attracting. But I think it's wonderful that you are giving so many people this this opportunity to learn to play a brass instrument or improve their own brass instrument playing by doing this. So, Tom, is this part of the idea is to recruit musicians who want to learn brass? I think so. With with every track that we have on the Music City playlist, there's also an accompanying version that is instructional. So if you are a great clarinet player and you're picking up mellophone, or even if you're a baritone player that wants to go pick up contra, you're not really sure what to do with this. We have instructional, you know, two or three minute long explanation of thinking about this, think about this. If you're doing this sound, you know, maybe adjust this a little bit. And then it goes into the exercise you know, a little break with some more explanation about the next exercise. So uh, I think a lot of students that go home that are, you know, in high school that might not have access to a private teacher, 
it's a great resource to give them maybe a different way of saying what their band director is saying and transition um, over into the brass field with uh, consistent instruction. So Steve, this is, I mean, if you, if you are a private teacher and you're finding this helpful with your students, sort of to Tom's point, imagine if I was a student and I did not have access to a private teacher, I'm gonna get all of this great instruction and information available online. It's wonderful that you guys have made this available. Yeah, uh, uh, kids, um, I'm a very visual learner. And so I grew up looking at tuners. Uh, I did not have access to these drones and tracks and things like that as a kid, and I wish that I would have. Uh, the majority of my students right now are far, far better than I was whenever I was their age. And I attribute a lot of it to drones, tonal energy, um, the technology of how kids are picking up information. What I love so much about the drones and the, the system that that is, is that whenever you look at a tuner, um, it doesn't react fast enough So for me. So if you're a, a student out in the world or if you're a band director out in the world and you don't see a lot of value in the drones because maybe you're happy with your tuner, I would encourage you to give it a little bit of a thought and give it give it a try because the the drone the tuner is not fast enough. You're going to see it and it takes a second to make an adjustment. You're going to make an adjustment and then the yet the tuner is going to respond to you again. And then you have to make another adjustment. It's a very it's almost like trying to squeeze smoke. You can't really ever catch it. Whereas the the drone, you're going to hear it so much faster. You're going to hear it immediately. And the physical connection that's going to happen uh, at school, we turn our speakers up so loud that it forces you to match. You do not have a choice but to match. And it, it is it, true north is so present that it doesn't take very long for kids to start to find where their best sound is because you're forced in a situation to where you you have to deal with the uncomfortableness of not matching the drone. So if you're a woodwind player and you want to start with just learning how to make a great sound, drones can get you there far faster than a tuner can. Um, if you're um, if you're a brass player looking to solve fundamental problems, whether it's pitch, tone, flexibility, range, whatever it is. The drones are going to get you there way faster, uh, and I and I speak to that because I have spent 15 of my years as a teacher teaching without drones, and I've spent 15 of my years teaching with them, and I will never, ever, ever not use them again. Wow, well that's compelling, <laughs> and I mean I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. So it makes sense to me immediately that I'm matching a pitch, and I would know, oh, I'm not in tune because I can hear that. But you're also talking about them recognizing tone quality immediately. Can you explain to me how that works with the drone system? Sure. Um, one of the things that Steve and I really workshop for a long time was figuring out how to take some of the music notation programs and some other uh, audio programs and figure out how to get color you know a lot of people use drones and it's very much the sine wave or the saw wave or the electronic sound that i mean just honestly it, it annoyed me to teach with it so we found some tracks that had natural color and natural overtone series and we balance some additional overtones that we can throw in there so you're actually hearing a richer color from when you're listening to it so you have something else to match to and um going on with what steve said i found my students pitch is more stable like from the front of the note from that left edge all the way till it touches the next note it's just a block of sound we record ourselves a lot we watch it back on the big screen and when they're playing it's just it's a big brick of sound because with that drone going on in your head any deviation in the air speed any deviation in the face right away you notice it right away and it gets them comfortable just repeating the same physical actions all the time. And that, that of course, allows them to be more musical because they, they can trust this they, and they can trust this. It, it, the drones also allow the kids to uh, come to their instrument with a set of skills that's, that promotes their own health. Um, kids that have really great habits 
tend to play their instrument in a way that's a lot healthier, that's a lot easier. Um, they tend to have a lot more fun doing it because they can do a lot more. Um, the drones help you invest the time, but it also helps shorten the time that's invested. Whenever I was a kid, if you were going to play a long tone, you're going to sit in your bedroom and you're going to play a long tone for a undecided amount of time. You're going to play sharp for the entire time. And then you're going to wonder why your endurance is not very good. You're going to wonder why you have uh, range issues or flexibility issues. And the, the resource just wasn't available for me back then to help me figure out, it's like, oh, there is a direct connection to where I'm putting my pitches and the sound that I'm choosing to play with uh, to the overall health and ease of the instrument. Um, and that, that's another point that's really important to me teaching sixth grade is drones have helped my students learn by about the time they're in seventh grade, they have control and they have, they, they have the purpose to choose where their sound is. It's not a situation where a kid says, I just sound bad and there's nothing I can do with it. I, I'll just have, this is just what I sound like. No, that's not true. Every brass player on the planet at sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade and eighth grade can absolutely sound like a professional. They just need to learn the flavor of where those pitches are and then create the habits around it. And the technology now is fantastic for that. Yeah, what's most exciting to me is just the idea of not wasting my time while I'm practicing. I mean, it's hard enough to get those kids to go home and spend some time. But then if they can spend time and you know it's going to be more efficient, more productive, they're making good sounds, they're matching the right tones, like that all just makes a lot of sense to me. And I feel like, especially when you talk about then trying to get a group of drum corps kids together, you're putting them together in for just through camps, the idea of them being able to practice more efficiently, um, you know, Tom, that just makes sense to me that you're going to be in so much better shape when they all actually do show up together whenever they can. Yeah, and I think going back to what Steve was mentioning about the students always having their phones with them, well, they can't go on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok because that's where the music is. And we're able to be efficient because we're not spending five minutes scrolling through Instagram there's a one minute countdown to the next exercise. So they, the density of that half hour is, uh, it's, it's deeper with what they're trying to get with. And I think um, having a consistent program between camps like this, hey guys, everyone go home, check out you know, video number seven, your, your assignment for the week between camps is gonna be the volume extension exercise. And, Crescendo, de crescendo, staying in pitch, we were actually able to go in and create a drone track that expands and contracts the volume. So all they have to do is match, as opposed to trying to blow it sharp and, okay, well, I got louder. But this tells them if they're getting out of center as they go both directions with the volume as well. So hopefully it helps. Uh, all the research that I've done with my students and Steve with his, I think it's definitely made a huge difference. So. Just bringing that to, to the drum corps setting. Yes, I have actually looked uh, for uh, like reasons to not do this uh, with my students. I've spent a lot of time and energy. Um, I There are little pieces of tools and technology that's out there in brass playing land. Uh, I've got a, a box over here in my practice room that's full of um, brass playing educational artifacts that will never see the light of day because they're not healthy. They don't, um, they don't promote the right habits, the right skills. They create other problems down the road. And uh, this is my life's work. I've been a private teacher almost 30 years. I have searched for reasons to not use these drones and I cannot find them. Um, it promotes the healthiest, the fastest, the most efficient way to create and build resonance and center uh, on a brass instrument. And it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter where you, how far you want to go. Uh, using your drones is far superior to using any other tool that's available. So, Tom, what I think is exceptional is that you are making this available to everyone at no cost from Music City. Why, why that concept? Why are you sharing this with everybody? Why not keep this super secret to Music City 
or your own students. I think it's great that you're not doing that. Explain that part. Uh, just as a resource, you know, a great teaching is, I'm not saying I'm a great teacher. I think I'm, I'm pretty okay, but I think making teaching and making music accessible to everybody and getting them to have fun doing it. You know, all of us in the marching band, the DCI, you know, anything to do with music, we've all gotten involved in this because there was some special moment in our life that said, hey, you really need to do this. It did something to you emotionally. And why put up barriers such as a $5 a month charge or $10 a month or a one-time fee for $1.99? You know, just if we can spread information and get the entire brass playing community to air quotes level up, why shouldn't we do that? You know, it's our responsibility as teachers to make sure everybody's getting great information. If I can create a better ninth grade trombone student, well, now they're a better 11th grade trombone student. Now their senior year, they give a senior start at their high school and they go, I really want to do this. Next thing you know, they're excelling in college and it's their chance later on to, to pass that along. You know, I've had a lot of great teachers that have afforded me the opportunity you pick up the phone, didn't matter when it was, and they were there for you. And this is our little bit of just sort of giving back to the community to say, come along for the ride. You know, if you get better, great. We know you're gonna get better, but check it out. And if you like it, great. If you don't like it, you know, that's fine too. But I think everyone's gonna get better from doing it. And if everyone gets better, music just starts to take off more. Yeah, I'd like to add that there's a period of time in some drum corps, there are some band directors that may not be a fan of the drum corps community educationally. They may not want to send their students to a drum corps because they say drum corps is bad for your playing. You play too loud, you play too long, whatever. Um, you can get bad habits from drum corps, whatever. Um, and I'd like to be a part of a brass staff that that is not an option. That is not a possibility. Kids that are going to come to Music City this summer are going to leave better. I, I put, I bet my reputation on it. Um, <clears throat> there is nothing more important than returning kids to their own organization better than they left it. And then those kids are going to come right back and they're going to keep doing it year after year after year. Uh, I did march uh, in uh, the late 90s and early 2000s, um, I did develop bad habits. I did have to deal with it. And <clears throat> so that I speak from experience, that's real. Certain places teach brass better than other places. And we are going to be a place that is that does this right by the kids. And this system helps us do that for sure. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for that. those really honest words and for that that sort of context for all of this. I mean, I've been around the drum corps activity since the 70s, okay? Yeah, so I was a tiny, tiny child. But anyway, the, the, but my point is, uh, no, I wasn't really. But um, like I've been around a long time and I know that that sometimes uh, band directors do think, oh, those those things about what, what we're teaching. And what I love about the conversations I get to have whenever possible with really smart and accomplished brass instructors like yourselves is reminding them, we have like university professors professional caliber musicians who are out there teaching great information and skills and habits to these musicians that they are going to take home. There's no question about that. We're teaching with the right information and fundamentals and things these days. And I love getting to share that. And you guys are two more examples of, you know, a wonderful drum corps doing great work with brass players, you know, creating great musicians. So I love that we can share that. And Steve, I love the way that you just described that. And I will say again, I do know that a lot of, of people who aren't brass players or maybe haven't had great instruction wherever they came from or didn't have a private teacher or whatever, they want to be able to be a member of a drum corps or even just learn to be a brass player wherever they are. I love that any musician who plays whatever instrument can take these skills and learn the right way and progress faster not have bad habits like that to me is really exciting because there are a lot of clarinet players saxophone players whatever that want to go march with an open class drum corps or somebody and they should have that experience and how wonderful that we're giving them those skills and that information 
so as as I speak to kids about you know where they should march and why Music City, I mean I I, I can sell that, but really the the other part of that equation is I would like to be able to reach out to more band directors and encourage them to teach in the summer because you are not going to find a better group of of band kids that it's more dedicated hungry thirsty for any information that you can offer than a drum corps kid and every band director you know they say band kids are the best kids absolutely they are drum corps kids are one more level interested in what you have to say and so as a teacher you know even if you just gave a week or two weeks of your time any on any drum corps staff that'll take you the the drum corps community always needs and wants better teachers but my favorite my favorite part about doing it is there's never a more thankful thoughtful kid than a drum corps kid Yeah, wow. Tom, do you want to speak to that? No, that, that's one of the reasons why I, I like working with Steve. He's very to the point, just he's he's very patient and thoughtful about everything he does. And both of us have always put the kids first. And, you know, better instructors lead to better products. And I've learned stuff from Steve. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, Steve's learned some things from me in our years teaching together. And as an educator, if you can put yourself around teachers that say things differently than you, you have a way better chance of evolving. If I'm teaching the same way in four years that I am right now, I'm not doing the kids any justice because I'm just stagnating as an educator. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you know, I have a friend that used to do summer teaching and he described it as where he got his veggies. You know, it's like it's, it's, like it's where he really sort of got that encouragement and he was around motivated, excited students and other instructors of the same type. and he felt like that helped him so much make it through the whole year that can be so difficult when you're, you know, the year of a, a music instructor is hard. Um, so taking time for yourself to sort of motivate and, ex and get excited and learn some things and get those veggies, um, as it were, I think that's really great. So Tom, um, we obviously have a link to these resources where this podcast is located, mm -hmm. the Roundtable, but um, tell us where we can find them. Yeah, so they can find these drones at youtube.com slash Tom Lukowitz. That'll take you to uh, the playlist. We have a playlist for Music City. I also have some playlists for low brass warm up drones that we've been using here in the studio. Uh, same thing with both of them. They have the music up on the screen and everything you need to do is in a one stop shop for that. The other way you can get there is going to bit.ly slash brass drones. That will take you directly to the Music City playlist. So I hope everyone's able to check them out. I think there's 21, 22 videos up now constantly getting updated right now we have some exercises broken up that are you know concert b flat to concert f concert f to low b flat and just working on a set but eventually we're going to evolve these things into probably you know, 50 60 different videos with specific exercises so if the student wants to go and just hey i need to work on my lip slur from b flat up to d up to f there's going to be maybe two or three exercises specifically for that and it'll all just be in that one playlist so you don't have to try to bookmark 17 different things. Just click on the playlist, scroll down, and you're good to go. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for making this available. Um, anything that's out there that people can use, as you said, students can use to practice better, um, not waste their time, be more efficient, get better, faster, solve their problems, um, not cause problems from the beginning. All of that is really, really exciting, very cool. Um, Steve, anything you want to say in closing as we're finishing up the conversation? Uh, no, it's um, if you're not fam I say no, and then I get I go on to speak. Um, if you are not <laughs> familiar with teaching with drones or playing with drones, you just got to start pick it up and just start doing it. Start small. Start with one exercise. Do one exercise a little bit every day, and just kind of see what develops. Um, it really does not even have to be specific to a brass instrument. It doesn't have to be only you know, high school or drum corps kids, um, take take what Tom has created and find a place for it in your own band hall. And um, I'm gonna make Tom work a little harder, but it, reach out to Tom. And Tom is a very inquisitive, thoughtful person. He wants to know. And if you're a band director somewhere in Kansas and you use two exercises and you have an idea and you think, 
I wonder if it could do this. Reach out to Tom. He'll make it happen for you. And it's going to elevate the experience for everything. And that's why I'm excited about to teach with Tom again is Tom is a magnet of anything that is around Tom's circle gets better. And um, Tom is very focused on that. And so these drones are a really good example and him being able to offer it to everybody for free. It's very generous, but it's what he wants to do is create excellence around him and uh, help you do that. Well, it's great. Tom, final thoughts from you. No, really, just uh, give it a chance. You know, try something new. Try something that makes you uncomfortable because that's where the learning actually happens. If we do the same thing every day, the same exercises, mix it up a little bit. You know, see and don't be afraid to expose yourself to sounding bad because that just provides an opportunity for learning. Wow, I love that. Um, so, okay, let's see. It doesn't cost anything. It's been proven to work. It's available online and the kids can access it from their own devices. I'm not really seeing a downside here, guys. Like this is so generous of you and Music City and everybody that's done this work. There's gonna be more and more added. So everybody go check this out. I think we will find it to be a great, great resource. Tom and Steve, thank you for taking time to talk to me today. I appreciate all this hard work. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. Marching Arts Education is the home of the Marching Roundtable podcast. We give you access to the top marching arts professionals through live webinars, podcasts, videos, interviews, and online coursework. With over 1,000 podcasts and hundreds of webinars and videos, there are hours of great professional development for you and your staff. Sign up for a membership to Marching Arts Education to get complete access to all webinars, videos, and podcasts, plus discounts on coursework. Many directors are using professional development funds through their school or boosters to make these resources available to their staff. Imagine what you could do with so many great new ideas from the top professionals in our activity. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and sign up for our newsletter to find out about the latest podcasts, webinars, and new content. Find all of this and sign up at marchingartseducation.com.